Are we here with Skip Taylor, Skip Hop, or Skip Rocker? Oh, good question. Good question. Uh, you just got the regular old, uh, you know, boring Skip Taylor today. Uh, I only do the, uh, for those that don't know, when I have Zoom meetings, I try to jazz it up a little bit. Uh, I did a Skip Rocker one where I borrowed one of my daughter's wigs and looked like a rocker. And then I did a Skip Hop one where I looked like, somebody said I looked like snow. That, uh, you know, it's a rapper going back a little ways. But, uh, you know, I've got another conference call coming Thursday, so I'll probably launch a uh, another funny little uh, Zoom meeting character on on Thursday. Stay tuned for that. Okay. Uh, can you give me a brief description of what OSAC is and what exactly OSAC does? Sure. So OSAC is a uh, Saskatchewan nonprofit organization. Uh, we're a member-based organization, so we have members from communities all throughout the province. Um, and then we have three main programs. We have a school touring program. Uh, Marianne Woods looks after that program and she helps art uh, coordinate artists to perform in schools all throughout the province. Um, and then we have a, a visual arts touring program. Uh, Zoe Schneider is the coordinator for that program. And we ship artwork all over the province to various communities. Um, and they set up an exhibition in their community for 23 days at a time. And uh, then they ship it to the, the, to the next community. And then there's my program, the Performing Arts uh, Touring Program. And we have members all throughout Saskatchewan and I coordinate tours for artists. And they go and they tour uh, all across uh, Saskatchewan. Performing in communities all the way from Orange to uh, Shaunavan, Estevan, and everywhere in between. How many tours have been affected by this crisis? Uh, in my program, there's about seven, seven tours that were impacted. Um, there were three large tours that uh, got completely canceled, uh, not canceled, postponed. Uh, we're looking to reroute those dates probably in uh, the fall of 2021. Um, there's a couple of, uh, of tours where uh, one or two shows on the tour ended up being canceled. They just kind of fell in right when the, uh, the pandemic announcements and the, uh, the government came out and said we couldn't have crowds of 50 or more uh, together. Um, and then there's a couple of other smaller uh, tours that were affected. So yeah, all in all, I would say we had about 45 shows canceled or postponed um, to a later date. So yeah, yeah, it was a big impact. Um, by the way, you can uh, ask questions in the comment section. Um, Please ask questions. questions. Or the question card. Um, when will you evaluate dates that are not listed as postponed? So we will, uh, we have a list of postponed Postponed shows on our website now. Um, when they'll be postponed to is kind of up in the air. Um, this is a very day by day situation, uh, and we really can't. We can make some estimations on when things will be back to, to normal, but really nobody knows. Um, and until the government gives us the okay, uh, we get uh, you know new guidelines from Saskatchewan Health Authority that. Uh, gatherings of more than 250 people are okay. We are really uh, at a standstill and really can't do a whole lot. Um, that's one of the reasons why a couple of the big tours, we've put them off till the fall of 2021. Uh, the feeling there is that hopefully, you know, 18 months from now, uh, hopefully things are back to normal or as close to normal as, uh, as they can be. Um, some of the smaller tours, we're still hoping to kind of get them rescheduled for the fall of 2020. Uh, but really, at this point, we can't say for sure that that's going to be the case. Does this affect your showcase event for art councils to see future performers? That's a really good question. So just for those that don't know, uh, every October, OSAC puts on a showcase event. And that's how our members decide uh, who they want to uh, book for their performing arts seasons for the following year, as well as for their visual arts uh, in their communities for the following year. Uh, so we have um, 
Um, our event schedule for October, as of today, it's still planning to go off as expected, but that could change. Um, again, if we uh, don't get any updated information from the SASC Health Authority that uh, groupings of 250 more are okay, uh, then we're going to have to make some decisions about whether our showcase event uh, goes forward or not. How many shows had you did before being postponed? Sony Strong 3919 asked that. Sorry, Sorry, I didn't quite, quite catch, catch that. that. So how many? How many shows were completed? How many shows were completed? Okay, so for the, uh, the 1920 season, we had 179 shows scheduled and about 42 were postponed or canceled. So uh, whatever the difference is there, about 137 were completed. So Terry asks, who has been your most surprising tour? The most surprising tour for me uh, in the 1920 season? Well, we did a uh, Jeffrey Straker and Friends tour that kind of kicked off the season uh, back in October. And that was um, 18 performances. And he played all throughout Saskatchewan um, with uh, Annette Campaign and uh, Jack Semple. And the feedback on that tour was really, really strong. People in Saskatchewan uh, loved having, uh, you know, those high quality Saskatchewan artists in their communities. And uh, the feedback was really strong on that one. So, yeah, that was so, a good one. Oh, sorry. That's a good question. So what we do, what we ask our arts councils to do is to fill out an evaluation on any of the tours that we do. So whenever a tour is complete, I get a kind of a feedback from all of them about how the tour went um, and that sort of thing. And so it gives us an idea of uh, if that artist would be good to uh, suggest to some of our other uh, touring networks across the uh, country. Um, we have organizations like ours in every province um, that we deal with and we talk to on a regular basis. So if an artist gets really good feedback on their tour, um, then we can let our other touring networks know that, uh, they receive that kind of feedback and hopefully they will uh, um, be able to tour in other parts of the country. Well, everybody's working from home. <laughs> this is my house. I'm, uh, I'm set up in the dining room right now and my wife is also working from home and she's up in one of our spare bedrooms. So, uh, you know, you have to sort of cordon off different areas of your house and say, okay, this is my office area. That's their office area. I've had our dog bark through a, through a few uh, uh, webinars and, and Zoom meetings and, and Microsoft Team meetings and things like that, uh, which is always fun. A rabbit runs across the front lawn and all of a sudden the dog is, oh my God, there's a dog. Or the, or the neighbor kids walk up front. She thinks she, she needs to go see them. So she starts to bark and things like that. So. That's been an adjustment. Um, um, you know, I think uh, in our office, there's seven of us usually. And so there's a social component of being able to just go knock on someone's door and see how their day is going. And, and that's sort of uh, been an adjustment. Now we pretty much have to do a little Teams, Microsoft Teams call or a little uh, uh, Zoom meeting or, or, you know, or call on the phone, so. Um. I already re-interviewed him last time, and uh, which tours were affected that you wish you could go to? Oh, well, that's one of the weird things about my job is because I'm in Regina, I actually don't get to see many of the shows that uh, we book. Um, you know, there's usually one or two shows a year that I'm able to uh, travel out to and get, get to, or the artist manages to book a performance in Regina that I'm able to see. Um, but... Uh, you know, through the process of, of working with artists at Showcase and uh, and then, you know, negotiating the, the routing and the booking with them, you know, you definitely develop a relationship with all of them. So it's honestly heartbreaking for me to know that we've had to cancel shows for artists and, uh, you know, and or postpone shows. 
and uh, and that they're going to be missing that income until we can get things back uh, back on the road again. So you know, I have developed these personal relationships with artists, and it's a real drag. And uh, you know, to know that you know because our operations have been suspended, um, those artists are now going to be out that that money, and they're not they're going to be missing that opportunity to develop 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 um, audience and develop uh, fans. Uh, through our network. So um, I, I have a special place in my heart. And, you know, for those who don't know, I actually started out as a musician, went to music college. And uh, very shortly after that, I said, you know what, being on stage is not really for me. It wasn't the right fit. Um, but I was lucky enough to find other things in the music in industry to do. Um, and so I just ended up being in a situation where I'm behind the uh, behind the scenes more now. Um, and so it's a little bit different thing, but at the same time, I still uh, really uh, feel for artists who are, have been devastated by uh, these cancellations, so. Uh, has anything new come out of this to support artists? And if anyone wants to put any questions, just put them in the chat, please. We would love some questions. <laughs> Running low. Um, well, I, you know, it, it's been, it's was such an abrupt end. Uh, there's a lot of people scrambling to fi try to figure out uh, things to do and ways to uh, make money for artists. So there is some government programs that have, that have happened. Um, artists have been trying to do um, some online stuff with uh, live performances. Um, and there's been a lot of call by other organizations to ask people, hey, if you're a fan, Go buy some merchandise, buy, you know, a CD and, and um, subscribe to Patreon accounts if artists have those. So there are some some things out there, uh, but it's been such a disruption that it's taking some time. I think, you know, over the next little bit, um, there will be some innovation come out of all of this. Um, is Facebook Live, is that the best thing right now? Maybe not. Uh, there's some side door concerts that are happening right now that seem to be a pretty cool way uh, for artists to uh, to perform and you know get paid for those performances, so you know there are some opportunities. There is some innovation happening, uh, and I think it'll continue to happen. We you know who knows we might see the next cool uh, interactive um, thing come out of all this. How do you communicate due to isolation about the cancellations? How do the artists and who the artists? To the yeah. artists and the general public, and to the general public. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll take you back to around the 13th of March. Um, we had tours scheduled. Um, some other provinces had already made, um, you know, declarations to not have um, gatherings of greater than 250 uh, and that kind of thing. So we had some expectation that this was coming down the pipe. So we you know, sent some emails to our members. Uh, I had phone conversations with the artists and the agents who were going to be affected saying, you know, as of today, we're still, you know, these tours are still happening, but seeing what's happening in other provinces, you know, we should be prepared that this could uh, happen here shortly. And that's pretty much what happened, you know. So we continue to have uh, lines of communications with our members and uh, with, the, uh, you know, and with uh, the artists. Um, and then it was our job, once the uh, shows were postponed, it was the, the job of our members, ourselves, to uh, then let their members or their patrons uh, know that that's what uh, was happening. So um, it was coordinated uh, as much as it can be a coordinated effort in, in such a rapidly changing situation. Um, you know, we made efforts to let everybody know and, uh, and go from there. There has been a couple of cool things. Um, our Yorkton Arts Council had to cancel uh, Canada Ballet Organ's uh, uh, production of Anne of Green Gables, which uh, they were really looking forward to. Uh, but they had quite a few members donate, um, or patrons donate the cost of their tickets to the artist. And so the Yorkton Arts Council made a uh, donation of uh, $2,500 to uh, Canada, uh, Canada's Ballet Organ to help them recoup some of their costs for uh, the loss of the show. Everyone, buy artists' merchandise, please. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> please do it. Um, 
Have you personally learned any new hobbies or created a, a lot of new product projects? Yeah, you know what? I'm a I'm a bit of a computer nerd at the end of the day, so I have been learning a, a little bit of programming. Um, I built a new. Uh, artist directory that we just launched on our website for visual artists so they can um, list their uh, list their businesses or their their show pictures of their art and things like that on there uh, indicate if they're available to do workshops and things like that um, so uh, yeah yeah I've been kind of doing a little bit of that I've been trying to exercise because the food intake has gone up a little bit in the last couple of weeks uh, you know, working at uh, the office, I was definitely into a bit of a routine of taking healthy food for lunch every day and not really, you know, not really getting into the snack uh, jar so much, but it's a little harder now that I'm home. You know, a little uh, cheese and crackers here, a little uh, chocolate there. And uh, so, yeah, so with, uh, with a little extra snacking, I've been trying to exercise a little bit more and uh, hopefully I can come out of this at a, a, net, a net zero weight gain, but we'll see what happens there. We will put a link in our YouTube version of that directory. Sure. And if you think you want us to do a guess that we might be able to do, just put it in the comment for an like, idea. Cool. Uh, including exercise, does that mean more dog walks? We do a few dog walks, you bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's always nice to get out. That always uh, calms the mind a little bit and... Uh, Gives you a little bit of uh, fresh air. That's always a good thing. Looks is that Tom? Is that Tom yawning? Bob. 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 Looks like you can use a little snooze and a dog walk. <laughs> yeah, but he yawned before too. Oh, did he? Okay. <laughs> it's even pointed out in the chat. Oh, there you go. Um, is your family tired of being around you so much yet? Uh, I mean, tired of you being around so much yet? Uh, they haven't come out and said so much, but yeah, you know, I'm sure, you know, I live in a family. I think we're all a little bit introverted, which is great. Uh, but introverts need a little bit of alone time now and then. And, uh, you know, you can only kind of go to your room or go downstairs so often until somebody interrupts you or whatever. But, you know, I think... Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> How about you guys? Are you tired of having dad home the whole time? No. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> no. My dad's going like in the background. There you go. Did you comb your hair? Did I? Oh, burn. Burn. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, I just combed it. What do you think? Better, right? <laughs> we, I go by that no comb, uh, no combing rule. Uh, actually, we ask every single guest about that, and it started because I never combed my hair before. Ah. Yeah. yeah. It started with Todd Curbs, I'm pretty sure. Or uh, Are you tired you, of your you hair? You guys might not know, but I actually worked with Todd many, many years ago when I used to be the, uh, um, Universal Music Rep and uh, Age of Electric were signed to Universal yeah. at the time. It was Age of Electric. Yeah. Do you guys uh, want a dad joke? How about a dad joke? I'm known for my dad jokes. Yeah. Do you know why you shouldn't ever believe atoms? Why? Because they make up everything. Hmm. That's not that bad. Actually, that's not that <laughs> bad. I, I just forgot a lot. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so do you want to come comic book shopping when we take Todd comic book shopping? Yeah. <laughs> Todd, Todd would probably be more fun comic book shopping than me. Well, we could take you both. I'd be like looking for like Archie and Jughead, and old school stuff. Yeah, and we, we also, uh, Bubba Bob. Um, thank you for for joining us. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank, you, thank you for joining us today, Skip. And hey, thank no problem. You your home. Hey. Okay. You guys have a great day. <laughs>